welcome to my channel. Today we will replace this with this and this. Now this is a simple temperature and humidity sensor by a Chinese company Xiaomi. It works great but it requires the use of their HomeKit hub which apart from sometimes waking up and loudly speaking in Chinese in the middle of the night it probably also sends a lot of data to China. And even though temperature and humidity values in my home is not really sensitive data, I don't really like this. And yes, I know that Apple also sends this data to them, and but I think they are a bit more uh, trustworthy. But hey, your mileage may vary and uh, there are also home automation solutions where all the data stays in your home on your server if you prefer. Anyway, this is an uh, ESP8266 01S. It's a very simple microcontroller with uh, only two pins exposed. Uh, but it's, as you can see, it's very small and it's also very cheap. This is a DHT20. It's also a simple temperature and humidity sensor like this. Uh, but what's cool about it is that it's communicating using I squared C. Now, this is battery operated and while the battery lasts a long time, at least a year, I want to make my sensors pluggable. So I'll be using this power module and it will all be housed in a housing with a built-in wall plug. It will then be connected using HomeBridge to HomeKit. So, Let's get started. I always start by wiring things up on a breadboard. It makes it easy to test and to write the software. The wiring for this project is very simple. Apart from power and ground, all we need to wire up is SCL on the sensor to pin 100 and SDA to pin 102. SCL is a clock signal, SDL stands for serial clock, and SDA is a data channel. SDA stands for serial data. Now, the breadboard looks more complicated than it actually is for two reasons. Firstly, because the pin configuration on the ESP8266-01 doesn't really fit on a breadboard. The other reason is that in order to program and debug it, I have connected the serial in and out to a programmer. This is then plugged into the USB port of my computer. Now, if you watched my previous videos, I want the code that runs on my sensors to be as simple as possible in order to be stable, bug-free, and hopefully not needing updates. It also makes things easier to debug. And this is one of the reasons why I use HomeBridge instead of using a HomeKit library on the device itself, which is also possible. Now, let's take a look at the code. Uh, the project consists of four files. Config has a settings. This is where you set up your access point and password. You need to edit this file. Uh, boot is where things are initially initiated, such as uh, the Wi-Fi connection. The main file sets up a very simple web server. It's so simple that no matter what you try to request from it, it only returns one JSON with the values for temperature and humidity. Now, I could just as well have created two endpoints, one for the temperature and one for the humidity. This would probably be slightly more efficient, but it would introduce complexity to the code. So I would have to look at the request and serve the corresponding JSON. Now, this is not a big deal, of course. This was the approach I had to take when I connected the garage, my garage door to HomeKit. But with a philosophy that simpler is better, I went as simple as I could. Now, for getting the temperature and humidity, I use a pre-made driver library. This is the last file, a dht20.py. Now, as always, the source code is available on GitHub and the uh, link is in the description. Uh, it's uh, now possible to check the output with a simple web browser. And um, yeah, as you can see, I got the correct values. Now, to hook this to HomeKit, I use Homebridge, uh, Homebridge plugin called 
HTTP Advanced Accessory by Stodomaster. Now, this is a plugin that is built by developers for developer. It can basically do everything you can do with an HTTP request, but you need to know what to do in order to configure it properly. Now, usually for me, since I'm not that good on the HAT protocol, the protocol used by HomeKit, this involves quite a bit of Googling and trial and error, but I always get it to work. Now, since the sensor has two functionalities, temperature and humidity, it will be two devices in HomeKit and I need two config files. They are very similar. They call the exact same endpoint in the exact same way, but they expose a service with different names and return different data points from the JSON. Now this is a config for the uh, temperature uh, meter. And as you can see, it exposes a service called temperature sensor. Every 10 seconds, this is uh, configurable in uh, the force refresh delay. It calls the endpoint and looks for the parameter temperature in the JSON and returns this to Homebridge as a get current temperature value. The config files are of course also available on GitHub. Link is in the description. All you need to do is replace the IP address in the URL. So now that the software is done, it's time to take it off the breadboard and solder it to a proper experiment board. I start with soldering on the headers and the power module. I always use headers for the microcontroller and any sensors or any other expensive components because this makes it much easier to replace parts if needed or to simply debug or update the software by removing the microcontroller and placing it in a programmer. In order for the sensor to fit in the box, I need to bend the legs. Uh, a better way to do this would of course be to uh, use an angled header, but since I didn't have one laying around, bending the legs worked just as well. After test fitting everything, it's time to solder the wires that connect the pins to the headers and the power module. In order to fit the board into the box, I need to round the corner slightly and uh, drill two holes. Because the power module gives off a little heat and uh, we all learned in physics that heat rises, I mount the power module up on top of the box and the sensors uh, below facing down. Uh, now the vents in the top and the bottom should make sure that as the heat rises through the top vent, room temperature air is sucked in from the bottom. And this should ensure that we get correct readings. And this is what the final result looks like. So here you can see it uh, in the box. And of course, with the box closed on the wall. And as you can see, uh, when I look in my phone on my home, I can see the, um, the temperature and the humidity, and I can also create automations based on this. Thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.